So in this video, we're going to walk through initializing two-dimensional arrays and then accessing the individual elements. For this example, we're going to initialize a 2D array. And we did this with a regular array. And the concept behind doing this with a 2D array is pretty much the same concept, except of course, we have more dimensions to worry about. So again, we're going to create a two-dimensional array. So when we declare this, our type is going to be the type we're going to store in the array, followed by a pair of empty brackets for each dimension we want to add. We're going to call this scores. And if I was going to initialize just one array, I could say 89, 73, 83, 94, 95, that would be a one dimensional array if I initialized it like this, but this is a two dimensional array. So what I want to do with a two dimensional array is I'm actually going to initialize however many rows I'm going to have. So I'm going to create four rows in my array. So I'll fill these values in as well. And so here I'm initializing one row, two rows, three rows, four rows, and notice each of these has five values each. So I'll actually put some spaces in there so that they come out nice and aligned. And so this is my scores array. And actually, even though Eclipse wants to put this here, I like to put it there so that it's lined up with what it started with. So here's my two dimensional array that I've initialized when I declared it. So now let's print the array. And we know how to do that. And again, I like to use R, R, and CC so I keep track of what's my row and column. And that should be a semicolon, not a comma. And then we're going to have the same type of loop here, except this will be CC. And whenever you copy and paste a for loop like I just did, you want to be very careful that you change all the variables. One common mistake is to increment R, R here because you forget to change it after you copy and paste it. If you do that, then you're going to wind up with the situation where you have an infinite loop because you're never incrementing the nested loop variables value. So I'm going to print each score. And I'll use the index RR for the row and CC for the column. And then after I print each row, I'll print a new line. So I've initialized my array and then I'm going to print it. And there we go. Now, a reasonable question at this point is, can I print a 2D array one row at a time? And the answer is yes. We'll say player and then we'll print out whatever their row number is. And we'll say all their scores. And we'll say scores RR. And if we do this, you can see we have a bit of a mess because we don't have a two string for our arrays. We can't print the 2D array one row at a time. However, there is a method in the arrays class. So we can say arrays two string and then pass this in. Whoop. Now when we run, it prints those neatly. If you know about it, what the two string method does, this may be a surprise to you because normally the two string is part of the object. And when you use the object as a string, it gets called automatically for arrays. They don't quite work like that. But again, if you call this arrays two string method and then pass an array to it, it will actually print the entire array. And since each row is an array, you can see that each row that we initialized gets printed out individually as part of our output. So another thing we may want to do, we may want to look at individual elements in the array. Now here, you can see that this is how we access it. We use the name of the array, the row, and then the column. So if I want to get a variable, let's say called value, I can set value to be row four, column three of my scores array. And then I can print that and I'll put whatever value is. And then that's going to be scores three, two. 
There's also no reason I couldn't say something like scores 0, 0 is equal to scores 0, 0. We can also print the maximal value of the score. So that would be row 4, which is index 3. Keep that in mind. And then column 5, which is index 4. So this gives us the first and last element of that array. So you can see 89 and 94. So just for fun, I'll do a couple other ones of these. I'll do one, three. Let's do a couple different ones on row two, just for fun. And we'll move row three down here to the bottom. So we'll say row two. And we'll say four one and zero. So we want to make sure that what we put in this string over here lines up with what we're saying. We actually print out here because the string is just going to say whatever the string says, but the variable we're actually printing is going to print whatever that variable is. So you always want to make sure that those line up. It looks like they do. So I will run this and then you can see I have a couple of the scores. If I look at my initial array, one three is row two, column four, which is 92. Scores two zero, that's row three, column zero, 88. Scores two one, row three, column two, 94. Scores two four is row three, column five, that's 81. And then scores three four, that's row four, column four, and that's the value 95. That's how you access the individual elements of a two-dimensional array. And we can go to higher dimensions if we want, but in most situations, you don't need more than two dimensions.